Martin Marshall. Morning. We have reached the point in the hay feeding season where we fed up everything that we've wrapped at our farm and have stored in the chicken house where we store our dry hay. It's a more ride right over to Eric's dad's farm. That's where we wrap a bunch more of our hay and have some more hay in the barn um, and get us a load of haylage, put it out for the cows. They're definitely slowing down on the amount of hay that they're eating, but we're not done with hay yet. The ryegrass is popping up a little bit, fescue's growing a little bit. We've been trying to spread chicken litter when we can, which really helps, but um, we probably still have probably another month of feeding hay, if I had to guess. But it should keep slowing down a little more and a little more. Eric's working on uh, running the cruster through some of our chicken houses. We finished selling our chickens last night. We've had a long 48 hours, but man, when that last load of chickens heads up the hill, it's a good feeling. Y'all come along today and uh, let's have some fun. We got three full rows of halids left here. I think there's close to 50 in a row. And then this partial row that I'm probably about to get most of them. So there's still a decent amount of halids left. Not counting the dry hay we have, but we always like to make sure that we feed up our haylage each, each year. It doesn't carry over into the next year as well as dry hay can. And we also like to put some dry hay out periodically for like calves throughout the summer. They're less likely to eat the haylage in the middle of the summer, but um, if you have some dry hay, it gives them a little bit of roughage, especially when they go on the heavy ryegrass diet which is hopefully sooner than later. So it's hard to know every year how much hay we need to wrap at our house, how much hay to wrap here at Eric's dad's house how much dry hay to store. A lot of it's kind of dependent on the fields that are closest by to that location and what they yield. Obviously, when you cut the haylage for the first time, you know, what you get is what you wrap, whether it's 100 bales or 300 bales. So we always end up hauling a little bit of hay one way or the other. Uh, there's always some extra handling of the hay this time of the year, but making it to the end of February before we're actually hauling a load of hay, not bad. You can see the grass starting to pop up. So there's cows on that second pasture over there, but not this one here. We'll probably get a little bit more established and turn them in, let them munch on that a little bit. We try to rotate them around as much as we can. Sometimes it's hard to do when you don't have every pen with water in it. Playing a game called Beat the Storm. <clears throat> There's a line of storms coming across the state right now. So I fed everything right around the house. I'm gonna go take the tractor and uh, Put some haylage out in the pastures that aren't right by the house and fingers crossed beat the storm. Go back and do some crusting or decaking as some people call it in the rain. Gotta go pick up my kiddos from school today. School and daycare. It's 221 right now, so still got a little bit. Right up here on the left is one of our pastures. This is one that's close to the house. So I just drove the tractor over here two times. 
see if they're up here eating it. Got a handful of them out there munching on some haylage. I made it, barely. The storm is about here. It's starting to rain. The wind has really picked up. I got the hay out, tractor back on. We'll head back to the farm, go see what Eric's up to. Maybe the storm will pass on through because I really don't want crust with it raining hard. But we just have to. Time for a tractor bath. Again. How many how many times are we gonna do this? Probably 17 more. You know when you get teased with spring mm -hmm. and it's what's the camera like? Yeah. Oh. That's a weird guy. What you got on tap for the day? Running the cruster, throw some more hay out. How are you riding around with seat heaters acting like you're deprived? Not once did I act like I was deprived, but I even turned it off. My side's not on. Turn it on! Well, I won't be in here long enough to no, benefit. You won't. A tractor with a seat heater would be nice. Or a cab. That'd be better, yeah. So what, what's on time? What you got? We got four houses left to run the cruster through. Feed cows. We got some of them over here and some of them over there. I crank my tractor, but I didn't crank your tractor. Yeah, I noticed. When I cranked mine. I was I was thinking that you may go get hay before you started. That's why I didn't crank it. I cranked mine. I actually was kind of hoping you would think that you left that other one running all night long. So I was like, this would kind of be a fun trick because you have done that before. All night long? Yeah, you left that 7200 running all night one night. Mm-hmm don't have film documentation to prove what you did. I went down early one morning at Chicken House and I heard something. I said, what is that? I went in the barn at 7200 just hanging out. When was this? Four years ago, five maybe. You're going way back in the holster. Mm -hmm. Didn't use nearly as much fuel as I thought it would have. Good thing an oil line didn't break and lock the motor up. But other than that, it was fine. Yeah, I think you're making stuff up at this point. Mm. But. I, I mean, I, that's too detailed for to make it up. It's interesting, though, that you knew it didn't use much fuel, meaning you were in it the day before. I remember we had filled it up, and you took it up there and were letting it cool down. And then it cooled down. I mean, it was a 14-hour cool down. Plan as of right now, 
we're obviously going through and crusting all these houses. 14 day downtime, which is not good. Our bird health has not been good. That's across the whole complex. That's not just for me and Eric. I think that I sold about 80, 84, 85% of my birds. So that's pitiful. But after this next flock, which will be here in probably less than two weeks, our plan is to do a total clean out. We haven't done that in several years. Since the company went antibiotic free, they have recommended that we don't do that. But with the problems that we're having, we have decided to do that. So we're gonna have to spread all this crusting and get some loads of uh, shavings. We usually do six loads of shavings per house. Shavings run about $1,200 a load. So it's not cheap to go through and do a total clean out, plus all the work involved. Um, we'll just cross our fingers that we have good weather because there's gonna be a lot of chicken litter coming out that we're gonna spread. So used to back before the uh, no antibiotics, when they used to, you know, would run antibiotics on the hen flocks or whatever, um, we would clean out our houses once a year and whenever you cleaned out your houses, you always got a huge boost in performance. So, be interesting this time to see if we do a total clean out, how we end up doing. So we've done videos before. We're actually videoing the crust and running the cruster through or decaker, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're not going to do that in this video because you know, if you saw that video, then you know what we're doing. But just for reference, I'll show you kind of what a house looks like right after you sell chickens. So this right here is kind of what you're left with. Um, this time of year, ventilation is not as great as it is in say June or July. Uh, down here in the tunnel end, it tends to get a little bit wet under the water lines. As you can see so all this stuff right here is what we're going through and taking out so I'll walk down here and show you a house that we've already run the cruster through just to give you an idea so in this house right here we crusted the water lines and then we went back and we did wall-to-wall crusting so this right here is kind of what you're left with there's still a few little chunks here and there. Um, we've also gone back through and raked the side walls. So this is all the stuff that was basically over here near these wooden posts that you can't get the cruster up against. And so we'll run that cruster back down the wall and uh, get all that out. Try to get as much litter work done as we possibly can with the downtime we have. Well, things were going great, and then they weren't. For those of you unfamiliar, that's not supposed to be like that. So it looks like we had a link and our chain break. This screen is nearing the end of its life. We had one break not too awful long ago. You can see we've got a piece missing here. We actually ordered a new screen and chains. We just haven't put it on yet. We're kind of going to try to get a little bit more life out of this one because uh, Lewis Brothers is very 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 proud of their chain and screen um i think our bill was around five thousand dollars just to get those parts so once again we'll see if we can put a band-aid on this and uh 
maybe get a little bit more life out of it. So after pondering on it a little bit, we decided we're just gonna put this crust in the barn for right now, and we're gonna go ahead and just do the full chain, screens, everything, um, get it changed out. Eric went ahead and he was, we're about done with our uh, round one of crusting, so he went ahead and finished that out. I decided to go ahead and go feed the rest of the cows. But uh, this will be another project that we'll probably be working on uh, the first of the week. You can probably expect a video to come from that too. So anyway, I'm gonna go get the cows fed and go check on Eric here shortly. Got to make a quick run towards town. So I've got a bell of hay on the back. Got the pasture on the way. I'm gonna drop that off for them. Got some beef. I'm dropping the beef off at the Barn of Blooms. It's an old dairy farm that they converted into like a plant and uh, flower and tree nursery. Um, it's a seasonal business and they're about to open back up for their spring season. We keep a freezer there with our hunting lover of beef. So I'll be dropping it off. If anybody's local and y'all want to swing by there, get you some plants, get you some beef, be a good weekend. Um, y'all can check them out online. Um, then I got to swing by the post office. Had a order coming in from a uh, Mr. Robert Steverson over in I think Eatonton, Georgia, maybe. So we appreciate the order and thank you for watching our videos. But uh, we got your box headed your way. Be there in a couple days. Go get all this stuff delivered and. Um, we're not far from starting our weekend. It's a good problem to have. Tractor's about due for a bath. We're back at the farm, so all the cows have been fed. Our first round of crusting is complete, so we'll let these houses sit for a couple days. It usually lets that litter dry out some. We're gonna hit it again with the cruster. Eric, why don't you tell them about our upcoming video, hopefully. What if I just quit right now? Just quit. Who do I turn my two week notice into? Are you quitting YouTube or chickens or cows or? Chickens. How do I quit? I think you just tell them don't bring you chickens anymore. I'll just go get a day job. It'd be some uh, big old hay barns. Yep. Um, so we got a fun, interesting video coming up. Maybe next week be a little different for you guys, put a little different spin in case you're tired of what we've been doing lately. Um, but anyway, tune in for that. Thanks for watching today. And in the spirit of working, I think a, an appropriate Bible verse for today would be Colossians 3, 23 and 24. You guys go check it out. Go get to work. See you next time.